The Kid Leroy. You probably know of him. He's had a phenomenal year in 2020, and at this point, he has more people listening to his music than Kendrick Lamar, Michael Jackson, Jay-Z, Tupac, the list goes on. Monthly listeners doesn't mean he's more famous than these people or that he makes better music. So is he really that big? Is he an industry plant? And how did he get to be such a massive artist in such a short time? Well, I think I have a few ideas. This is the curious case of the Kid Leroy. Make sure you drink a water while watching this video. Unfortunately, from the very beginning, the Kid Leroy's career starts out a little dicey. YouTuber Hello Yasin originally posted a video shining light on his dark past in May of 2020. Also, Progress gave his opinion on the situation. Both are YouTubers that are known for exposing the ins and outs of the music industry. Today I'm going to try to provide a less biased perspective of the whole thing. Also, a little disclaimer. When Hello You Seen originally uploaded The Dark Side of the Kid Leroy, his team decided to false copyright strike the video and it got taken down and removed from YouTube. Eventually, he was able to get the video put back up, but I'm trying to avoid that. Everything in this video qualifies as fair use and there is no copyright infringement. I also would just like to say that I am not claiming any of the information in this video to be 100% true. All of the information is heavy speculation backed by tons and tons of research. The Kid Leroy, born Charlton Howard, is a 17-year-old pop and hip-hop artist that proudly represents Sydney, Australia. He says he's been rapping since he was four years old. His mother, Sloane Howard, always supported his music career. She herself is a talent manager and would be his acting manager since he was very young. He claims that he had a relatively poor slash lower class upbringing, which is true to some degree. I ended up living with my mom and, and we became super broke. I had like a crazy childhood. I've been to a lot for someone who's fucking 15. Yeah, like yeah, what? Tell us about it. Recently, been homeless and shit. But we do know that his father, Nick Howard, is a successful Australian singer slash songwriter and producer who's worked with people like Nelly, Joe Budden, Fabulous, Jay-Z, Fat Joe, and many other successful recording artists. Sometime in 2012 or 2013, the Kid Leroy, his mother, and his brother moved to a town called Broken Hill. His parents were separated, and his father stayed in Sydney. Leroy moved in with his grandparents in Broken Hill, which is an average middle class or maybe a lower middle class area. Uh, we went to my, we moved with into, we moved in with my grandparents in this country town called Broken Hill. Leroy claims that his mother couldn't support them financially, so let's assume she wasn't making much money, or any money at all. We do believe Leroy went to a private school called Sacred Heart Parish Primary at the beginning of 2015, due to his mother's Facebook posts. If you see the logo on his shirt, this matches the logo outside of the school in Broken Hill. It does cost money to go here. Going off tuition fees on their website, it looks like it's about $1,500 per year. And if his brother also went there, which we kind of know that he did, that would be about $3,000 a year. So you're not exactly poor if you're paying for private school, but let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say that his grandparents were paying for it, or his father was paying for it, despite living 14 hours away. It's important for me to remind you that the Kid Leroy's mom is a talent scout and manager of various types of talent, like musicians, models, stylists, etc. At this point, she wasn't a successful one, but it seems like that's what she was pursuing. She had various posts on Facebook supporting these claims. Broken Hill is a really small mining town, where the median age is about 45. Anything that could be helpful to her career would be in a big affluent city, where there's a lot of young people pursuing the entertainment business. Well, conveniently, six hours from Broken Hill is a major city called Adelaide. In the middle of 2016, Leroy would link up with a local DJ slash producer named Marcus Wilson, who at the time went by DJ Lady Killa. We know this information after YouTuber Hello You Seen exposed it. Marcus had a decent amount of local clout in Adelaide as a DJ and party promoter. Since Leroy's mom was very passionate and supportive of his music career aspirations, we believe she scouted Marcus out and tried to connect them. We think she told Leroy to message him on Facebook, because how else would a 12-year-old try to get in contact with an 18-year-old that lives six hours away in a major city? Actually, Leroy doesn't even ever mention Marcus. In fact, he doesn't even recognize that Marcus exists. In every interview he has ever done, he refers to him as some guy. 
posted a video and this guy that I was recording in um, this guy's like garage. When I started recording, I was like 12, cause some dude was like, you can come use my studio for free. But nonetheless, Leroy reached out first, and eventually, Marcus would answer Leroy. He recognized some of his videos on Facebook of Leroy rapping, and they would book him for a party in Adelaide. The party seemed to go well from what we know. After the party, they would start working together. Marcus would record Leroy for free in his garage. He believed in him. Marcus claims that he was the one who advised Leroy, who at the time went by the moniker Charlton, to start singing and avoid the lyrical hip-hop route. They made a little collective together called The Dream Team, and Mama Capone, aka the Kid Leroy's mom, would be the manager of the duo. Leroy's mother was very fond of Marcus, and he was coaching Leroy in the right direction and apparently putting out some pretty good music. She posted often on her Facebook supporting the Dream Team and their collaborations. Marcus essentially started the Kid Leroy's music career and helped him develop his sound. Pretty much all of the history of Marcus and Leroy was erased later on. This is where we can thank Hello Yassine for bringing that to light. Also, you might be wondering, how could the Kid Leroy and Marcus work together so often if they lived six hours away from each other? The only way that's possible is if Sloane drove her 12-year-old son there every weekend or every other weekend and stayed in Adelaide so they could work, and then drive back to school during the week. But that's a lot of work for a poor family supporting a 12-year-old's rap career. This is where we saw a lot of inconsistencies. In a XXL interview, he said he went to a boarding school in 2015 in Adelaide, but he never admits to living in Adelaide in any other interview ever. He claims he was in Broken Hill for four years and then back to Sydney. We do think that he went to school in Broken Hill on account of the shirt he's wearing in the picture. But then I started to think, where is this picture taken? That doesn't look like Broken Hill. And the caption reads, Chuck's at his orientation day for year seven next year. So the shirt he's wearing doesn't represent the school he's going to next year. That's the school he's currently going to. So where's the school next year? Well, I imagine this picture was taken near the school he just got out of orientation for. And on Google Maps, here we have the exact place where this picture was taken. You might notice the tree he's standing next to, or maybe this sort of crooked tree that's kind of in the background here. And maybe if you zoom in, you can see the street sign, but we're pretty much 99.9% .9 confident this is where the picture was taken. <laughs> and this picture was taken right around the corner of Sacred Heart College Champagnat campus in Adelaide. And there's no way I said that right. And what year does this school start at? Year seven. And what year is it next year for the Kid Leroy? Oh yeah, year seven. How convenient. So why does this matter? Well, he never claims to have ever lived in Adelaide other than that tiny little note that we saw in the XXL interview. So in general, why lie about that? But more importantly, tuition for this school that he currently just got out of orientation for is $7,500 a year and $20,500 for boarding. So how are you poor, but you can afford $28,000 for tuition for seventh grade? That's almost all of what I currently owe for going to a university. Granted, he only admits to being at the school for about six or seven months because his mother couldn't support him any longer. Then I went to boarding school for like six months. That didn't really work out. We had to move back to, to Sydney. I should preface this theory by saying Leroy claims to not have that great of a relationship with his father, which I think could be accurate. My whole life has been really in and out with my dad. But he was definitely in his life. Theory number one. His father is way more well off than he admits. Here is a picture of him, his father and his mother in 2015 when they applied to the school in Adelaide, which we can confirm that this is the high school or the main campus of Sacred Heart College in Adelaide. Two months later, he got accepted and his dad is going to pay for the whole thing. Theory number two. We came across this picture that his mother posted on her Facebook of her uncle, which if it's her uncle, it's probably the Kid Leroy's uncle, with the caption, uncle in his art studio in Glen Elk. Where is Glen Elk? Oh, five miles from the boarding school we know that he just got accepted to. So if he is poor, he gets a scholarship from his mother's lack of income and lives with his uncle for free. Plus, watch this clip of him talking about his uncle. And then my uncle, who I was very close to and my mom was very close to and who helps 
my mom had a lot of stuff like that. He got uh, murdered. So after that, like a lot of a lot of stuff happened, and we just had to. Yeah, we we ended up. Well, actually, that that I went to boarding school for like six months. Now it could definitely be a different uncle that passed, but it makes sense. Gets accepted to the school. Uncle passes away, so now they have no way of supporting Leroy or a place to live because room and board was twenty thousand dollars a year, thus making him move back to Sydney. I only bring up these theories because I just can't rationalize in my head how he could live in Broken Hill and his mother would drive six hours every weekend or every other weekend just to pursue a rap career. At 12 years old, it just seems like a pipe dream. And if you're poor, you definitely don't have the time or the money to do that. So if he sticks to the story of only living in Broken Hill, he never has to mention Adelaide, he never has to mention Marcus existing as a real person, and he never has to recognize going to an expensive private school because all of those things don't fit the Kid Leroy narrative. But again, I guess it's just a theory. So everything is going well with Leroy and Marcus. We think Leroy is living in Adelaide. They are spending every weekend together, releasing music, which all of now is deleted, and most likely building a fan base online. And Leroy's mother is encouraging their growth through various, various Facebook posts. In November of 2016, six months after Leroy meets Marcus, his mother posts this on Facebook boys see off to the big smoke to meet with the big players in the music business. So proud of you guys, going straight to the top. The big smoke is another term for Sydney, Australia. Kinda like the Big Apple. Follow your dreams, as you never know where they will take you. Six months since meeting, and you guys are already flying the countryside with invitations from radio and TV stations, going straight to the top. It's unclear what big industry people she was referring to, but this is where the story gets weird. And I also just want to mention that this reinforces exactly when Marcus and the Kid Leroy met. He was exactly 12 years old, it was exactly May of 2016, and we know that at least we have our timeline right. Leroy claims in his No Jumper interview in 2019 that a man by the name of DJ Ziggy DM'd him on SoundCloud, and he invited them to meet in Sydney and play their music on the radio. My manager now, Ziggy, um, back then he was a radio host. He hit me up on SoundCloud and he's like, yo, I'll fuck with you, blah, blah, blah. Let me spin one of these songs on the radio. My manager Ziggy, he hit me up on SoundCloud when I was just making trash music. We do know that DJ Ziggy worked for a few different radio stations. We're not exactly sure which one it was. But on Quarry Radio 93.7 FM, DJ Ziggy hosted a weekly radio show series called The Really Real Show. But then Marcus claims that when they got there, they didn't actually meet DJ Ziggy and they met with some other people from Sony Music. This was sourced from Hello You Seen. Which just doesn't make any sense. You say you're meeting with someone, and then somehow end up with someone else? Marcus also claims that when they went to the meeting, that Leroy and his mother stayed in Sydney, and Marcus flew home to Adelaide a few days later. Which helps me put my theory together a lot. Leroy also says in the 2019 interview that Ziggy invited him to use a studio for free to record music and that there were people there that were going to help him make music. Hey, yo, I have my own studio, you come down, use that shit for free. You know, we got people in there that love to help you out. A lot of the shit that you hear now, is only, I only put it out last year, but I recorded that shit like, literally like three years ago when I first came in there. And you're 15 That's now, so this is what you were doing when you were 12. So that took place in 2019. He said, a lot of the stuff you hear now, I dropped last year, 2018 but I recorded it when I first came in there. So here is where I put the pieces together. Leroy and Marcus start making a ton of music from May 2016 until November 2016. In November, DJ Ziggy discovers him and he sees some potential. So that's when he DMs him. And the big meeting Sloan was talking about was when Ziggy invited them to the radio station. Ziggy invites only Leroy and his mother to the studio a few days later after Marcus had left. Ziggy was managing an artist named Manu Crooks, who was a frequent collaborator with another artist called Miracle, who now goes by Blessed and the Kid Leroy still follows him to this day. Ziggy puts Leroy in the studio with Miracle, and this is where he records the 14 and a Dream EP. Maybe not those exact songs, but songs that were on the same quality level. Now that he's working with a better engineer and he's in a real studio, he can make some better stuff. So after they made these songs, they see even more potential than they did before and they offer him a little deal. Management, publishing, record deal, I'm not quite sure, and it's pretty much impossible for me to tell. But 
He is 13 right now, and he can't make these decisions on his own, legally. So his mother accepts the deal because all she wants for him to, is to make it. And if we still think that they're poor, they might really need the money. They cut off Marcus because they don't need him anymore, and they move from Adelaide slash Broken Hill to Sydney. In February, two months after the meeting, she posts that Leroy got accepted to the Australian Performing Arts Grammar School in Sydney. In the No Jumper vlog, he takes us to his old house in Waterloo, a suburb of Sydney. This picture that she posted of Leroy getting accepted to the school is right outside the house that he said that he lived in. We can compare the images again with Google Street View, and you can see that this is the exact location. So, we know that within two months of the meeting with Ziggy and the quote, big players in the music business, he already moved to Sydney and was attending a new private school. Which again, not sure how this is happening because this school tuition is $13,000 per year to go to, along with all different types of fees. And he was living in Waterloo, which is definitely a poor area. He claims that at this point, him and his mother were poor, moving around, and sometimes homeless. So how was he attending this private school? Also, real quick, fast forward to August of 2017, Sloan posted that his brother would also get accepted to this same school, so now you are sending two kids to a prestigious private school while somehow still being homeless. Theory number one, school could have been paid for using the money from this deal that we think he signed, and his mother prioritized his education more than his living situation. Theory number two, his dad is paying for the school, just like he did before, and his mother has to cover the living expenses. And the house in Waterloo was an affordable option within five miles of the school because who knows, maybe the mother wasn't as successful as the father. It's very possible. Moving forward, February of 2017, Sloan posts two music videos of Leroy stating that he is now solo, and she makes that very clear. So Marcus is 100% out of the picture. She also states in a long post about how she is permanently residing in Sydney, so we know for a fact that we have our time frame right of them moving. Plus, this music video was filmed in Sydney, as we are pretty sure that we found the exact location, which is somewhere in between his house and where he was going to school. At this point, we know he is connected with Ziggy, and it strongly suggests that he's being managed by him, because three months after their meeting, his mother consistently posts about him getting radio support from Sin 90.7 FM and Corey Radio. Coincidence that he moves from Sydney and then immediately starts getting radio support? Probably not. Ziggy, probably making it happen. He's probably being managed by him. But again, we can't be 100% sure. It isn't until August of 2017 where we spotted Leroy in a music video by none other than Manu Crooks. Which if you remember, Manu Crooks is managed by Ziggy. Leroy is seen chilling with a massive group of music industry people, including Ziggy, Manu, and Miracle, aka Blessed. So it's pretty safe to say that Leroy is in the mix with these guys. But this is the only indication in all of 2017 that they are connected. But let's rationalize that for a second. All of these people he's connected to are grown adults. He's only 13 turning 14 years old in this year, so... How much time are they really going to spend with a 14 year old? And nobody's going to be posted up on Instagram with him either, so that's most likely why we couldn't find any pictures of them chilling with these people other than the one. This is where we have a big gap in our timeline. After August 2017, the only information we have on Leroy is that he was liking and commenting on some of Ziggy's Instagram posts. We don't know if he was working on music, releasing music, doing shows, or anything. The next time the kid Leroy jumps on our radar is one full year later in August 2018 when he became a finalist in the Triple J Unearthed High School Music Competition. Triple J is a large radio station in Sydney, Australia. Triple J Unearthed is essentially a subsidiary that is dedicated to showcasing underrated talent in Australia. The kid Leroy in interviews brushes over this competition. It seems like it didn't mean much to him which raises red flags. Then I entered like a, uh, a radio competition. It was for like a, a radio in Australia. It was called mm. Triple J. And then I got into like the top five. So they called me and it was like a, a radio thing. Like, oh, you're in the top five. Like, and I was just like, oh, everyone go follow my Instagram. Mm -hmm. And then I, I only had like 300 followers or 400 followers at the time. So then I got like 3,000 extra followers. It was cool. Like it wasn't really popping or nothing like that, but it was like, you know, people in Sydney, 
I guess let us know about it. And it raises red flags because this is easily the biggest thing that would ever happen to him as far as the public knows. He should be ecstatic about this. And when he reflects on it, shouldn't it be more meaningful to him? To a 14 year old going from 300 followers to 3000 followers, that has to be what blowing up feels like. But it didn't seem to phase him. Upon further research, we actually found the phone call when the radio station contacted the Kid Leroy. Kid Leroy himself uh, joins us on the line now, mate. With that song there, Disconnect as well, did you submit that on the last day, on like last Monday? Yeah, I submitted it at like 11.50 or something. <laughs> mate, something like you're that. cutting it fine. Yeah. I mean, you had like basically a month to apply. Did you catch what he said there? He submitted his song at the very last minute, 10 minutes before submissions closed on the very last day, when he had a whole month to submit. And he became a finalist? Also something small, you can listen to the full two minute conversation he had with the radio guys. He never told anyone to follow his Instagram, so I don't know why he just decided to say that. Also, I should mention that 10 days after being a finalist in the competition, he released his first EP, 14 in a Dream. And with all of this information is where I proposed my theory. Theory number one, Ziggy has worked for and done a couple of DJ sets for Triple J. Also, He's been connected with various radio stations since 2016. It's possible that Ziggy set up Leroy to be a finalist in the competition without giving Leroy much detail. This is why Leroy doesn't think highly of the competition nor seems to remember much of it. And conveniently, 10 days after this competition ended, he used the buzz to promote the 14 in a Dream project. Whether the competition was rigged or not doesn't really matter much, because now he had a little bit of buzz in Sydney. We found one of his early mixing engineers, Mixtree, who posted a series of photos in September of 2018, recording Leroy and working closely with him, including a record, now deleted, where he remixed Drake's nonstop. Apparently this was a big song for him on YouTube, did a couple hundred thousand views or so when it originally went up, but obviously it's deleted. Continuing his buzz. One month after the competition, Leroy announced a collab with Lil Skies, which never came out. But dang, 3,000 followers and a little bit of buzz on YouTube, and then a collab with Lil Skies? Ziggy must be doing his job. November 20th, 2018, a couple months later, Australian blog Amplify, which is a source for all things music related, announced that Juice World would be coming to Australia for the first time in a couple months, and hip hop sensation The Kid Leroy will be joining Juice World. Well, geez, that happened fast. But I'm just trying to figure out how Leroy got connected with Juice and his team so quickly, because there's not really one clear story from any interview, but this is what we got. Juice World would hit Sydney, Australia December 30th of 2018 for the first time for the Falls Festival. Then he had two sideshows from the festival January 4th and 5th, so it's likely he stayed in town for this seven days or so. The Kid Leroy was his supporting act. Either Ziggy made it happen, or it was genuinely because he was buzzing in the city. So why not get to know your supporting act? Leroy claims that Pete, who's Juice World's manager, invited him to a hotel to meet Juice World and that this was the first time they made a connection. First time we met was in the hotel room. I was with Pete, my manager, and we were talking, and then uh, he knocked on the door, and Pete's like, oh, go and get that. And I opened it, and it was fucking juice, and I was like, oh my god. From this post on Mixtree's Instagram, we can infer that they had jumped in the studio together. We know that Juice eventually became fond of Leroy and he was like a mentor to him. So it is likely that their dynamic, as well as the music Leroy was making, inspired Pete and the Juice World's team to sign Leroy, or at least to start the conversation of signing Leroy. But that is almost definitely what happened as far as what we can piece together from interviews of what the Kid Leroy said. You can say it was industry plant-ish, or maybe his dad has some sort of strings he's pulling because he's in the music industry, but to me, it just kind of looks like Juice World and his team were going to Australia, so they had to look into a supporting act and someone who was buzzing in the city. So they came across the Kid Leroy, who had, you know, just generated a little bit of buzz, and they invited him to the hotel to meet him after they decided to book him. And they probably just made a really good connection. They believed in his spirit and his energy, and then that's why they tried to start pursue signing him. Any other theory that I could come up with would be way too speculative. So I think that's honestly how it happened. Three months after he met Juice and their team for the first time, it appears that he signed to Grade A, AKA Lil Bibby's management label in March of 2019. Also in this same month, he appeared in this no jumper vlog, but the whole vlog was essentially about him. 
Most people would scream industry plant, but the whole thing does seem pretty genuine. But I just find it interesting that Adam, or anybody, didn't even mention Juice World. And at this point, he had already performed for him. He opened for him in Australia. 13 days after this vlog was filmed, he signed to Lil Bibby. There is some confidential information that I understand you wouldn't want to give to people, but not mentioning Juice World at all? Adam was asking him questions about his career and his come up and this and that, and at no point did he ever say, and I got to open for Juice World, or I got to meet Juice World in the studio, that was crazy. Is that not? the most interesting thing that's ever happened to you at this point? As far as we know, Leroy wasn't releasing any music in 2019. He would go on tour with Juice World in the summer of 2019, but not performing, just traveling as his friend. At least that's what we think. We believe that once he signed in March 2019 that they just hit the ground running and started to make tons and tons of music, obviously not releasing any of it. And all of the music that we heard in 2020, we believe was starting to be made in 2019. Being coached by Juice World and lightly becoming more known by Juice's mainstream fans while being sort of in the background on social media and on the tour. But it wasn't until December of 2019 when he dropped the song Let Her Go, accompanied by a lyrical lemonade video that was the real blow up. That was when everybody became aware of who the Kid Leroy was. And I mean, obviously the, that video happened because of Bibby, but I mean, that's not, that's just, that's just business. It's not really like industry plan-ish. But then all of 2020 has just been up. Diva with Lil Tecca was a huge song. Addison Rae was a huge hit. And then he also dropped his debut album, Glove. And all of 2020 has been nothing but W after W, big moment after big moment for the Kid Leroy. So immense that he has 25 million monthly listeners and now everyone's accusing him of fake streams and being an industry plant. But I don't want to believe that the Kid Leroy is an industry plant and I don't think that he is. But the fact that he's really unclear about his past and that he can never tell a straight and narrow story makes things look really suspicious. Why lie about Marcus? Why lie or never mention being in Adelaide? Why lie about going to nice schools and never mentioning them? Why only refer to Marcus as some guy? Marcus believed in you. He gave you your first opportunity to record, even if it was just in a broken down garage with a crappy microphone. If you had a falling out, why not just say it? I started my career with Marcus in Adelaide. He was a mentor to me. I enjoyed making music with him. He taught me a lot. I got this opportunity from Ziggy in Sydney and I chose to take my career there. The only way I can rationalize it is maybe because his mother was making all the decisions for him since he was so young, I mean, 12 or 13, and she wanted him to be successful no matter what, and she knew that they just simply did not need Marcus to achieve that success. As far as everything that happened once Ziggy started managing him, I don't think that's him being an industry plant. I think that's just the music industry. Ziggy got him buzzing in the city no matter what strings he had to pull to do it. But it got him connected to Juice, Pete, Bibby, and the whole team. And they decided to sign him from there. So Ziggy passed on the torch to a company or a group of individuals that could turn him into a superstar. This just seems like the natural progression in the music industry. Not so much industry plant-ish. It really is just the beginning of the Kid Leroy story being so shaky, so unclear, and hiding so many things that makes you question the validity of everything that he's ever done after that. But that's what I think. What do you think? Well, if you're listening to me right now and you're watching this, I just want to say thank you for making it through 27 minutes or so, the longest video that I've ever uploaded. I just want to reiterate the fact that Yassine's video got taken down because the Kid Leroy's team just didn't want it. They false copyright striked it, which is illegal, and eventually he would get his video up. But in the event that that happens to me, I really need you guys to ride for me. And we gotta raise hell because just because they don't want this video out there doesn't justify it being copyright stricken. So let's make sure that doesn't happen. I also just want to reiterate if I wasn't extremely clear before, I'm not saying anything what I said in this video was facts or 100% true. It's just speculation backed by research, but really good research. <laughs> and I'm pretty proud of some of the things that I kind of drew together or the puzzle pieces that I put together. But again, just really can't come on here and say that this is true no matter how true I think it might be. The Killer Roy.
if you're watching, even if you don't want me to make another video, can you please clarify some things? Can you maybe jump on a call with me? At this point, I'm just curious. I don't even care about the lies or whatever. I'm just curious. I spend so much time researching a DM, maybe something. Just let me know. Maybe did I do a good job? <laughs> do, do I have anything right? <laughs> let me know. I don't know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, if you're new, subscribe and I hope you're drinking water while watching this video.